Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Orbison, I'm the Director and CEO of the National Art School. Just wanted to welcome you to the Kellyn Art Prize 2020. Quick walk through of a couple of works. And I, I judged this show and I'm really pleased to see all these amazing quality of works and so we're just going to look at a few. Most of all, in, in this body of work in 2020, I was really impressed with the, the nostalgia, the, the looking back at history, the, the, the circumspect nature of what we've been through in the last 12 to 18 months, particularly here in regional New South Wales. We've seen a lot of bushfires, floods, and of course, we're right in the middle of the pandemic, COVID-19. And that's really become apparent in all of the works. And I'm just going to look at a few, particularly here, this is Hiromi Tango's work and Dan Kyle's. So Hiromi um, meditates every morning and every evening at dawn and dusk. And she looks out across the ocean where her parents and her brother live in Japan. And she, she wants to make sure she um, responds to this part of history and the um, the disruptive nature uh, of her family relationship, but also takes it in good measure and meditating through it. So this is dawn and dusk. This is Dan Kyle's painting, and Dan Kyle paints in the Blue Mountains, and he particularly uh, has experienced a, a lot of bushfires around um, his studio. And you, what you're seeing with this work is the, the dark ferocity of the bushfire but also you're seeing this amazing light and energy and revitalization coming out of that bushfire. So it's the tragedy and the trauma of the bushfire and next to the, the amazing nature of the Australian bush, how it quickly revitalizes itself. So just after we've had a conversation around Dan Kyle's work, I thought we'd have a look at these two works by Jane Tonks and Jeff Harvey, and this is Jeff's paintings of the devastating bushfires of the south coast in New South Wales. And this beautiful duality he creates in his work with these two canvases and the lake, and this, this reflection, and it's this kind of um, uh, beauty in destruction. And it's such an aesthetic, uh, it, it, it's an incredible visual thing, particularly at night when you see the fires burning across the landscape. But then the other side of that is the great destruction and devastation that it has caused. And same over here with Jane Tonks's work, you can see these amazing Australian eucalypt landscapes just devastated. And what's really interesting about this painting is, is that nature, how, what you feel in the landscape when you're there. You're just a small little part and these towering tall trees all around you. She's created that really well. And of course there's a lot of amazing landscape paintings in this show. Um, of course one of Australia's great, Susan Archer, um, painting out of Wedderburn for 30 years now as she responds to the landscape and shapes in the landscape. She, she collects a lot of um, uh, objects and things and um, bark and parts of the landscape and responds uh, and you feel a great energy of the landscape. What's, um, what also is really interesting about this show is uh, the, that we've been through such difficult times but also how the artist responds to that and in this work here by, by Mark Dover and from the Melbourne um, Botanic Garden how he looks for the tranquility in the landscape, which is a great time to be doing that. You see one level over here, the destruction in the landscape and the tranquility in the landscape. It's quite incredible, beautiful um, uh, sensibility, use of gouache and other material. And I, I always enjoy um, Lee Perry's work as she looks for bush myths, you know, stories that are there in this massive, vast landscape in Australia. And there's so many stories and narratives, not just in the town, but in the landscapes uh, across thylacines and, and different animals you'll find, different stories, and she conveys that really well. So what's also enjoyable about the show is the narrative where, 
we're uh, seeing a lot of the artists work. This is Craig Handley and Glenn Priest, uh, and you can feel, you can see these kind of stories and memories of his past. And Glenn Priest is referring to uh, a family story, let's say, when um, his father's brothers went off to the war, and his father was too young. He rode his bike out to Kangaroo Valley to go and shoot and hunt uh, rabbits for pal the, the, pal the, um, the skins and also the meat. And it's a, a wonderful little lyrical work where you really feel that emotive response. Fa young father, the bike, the gun, in the bush. So there's a lot of portraiture and people in this show. This is a uh, story work by Deborah Marks. Um, and here, this is Catherine Abel's work, and I don't think my eyes are actually good enough to see the amount of detail on the, the face, particularly here in Catherine's work. She, she responds to art history and uh, significant uh, masters in art history, and you can see her technical skill is quite incredible as she creates this image of a friend's daughter. And She's trying to capture that emotion of the person. Over here, this is Sally Ryan's work. And Sally says of herself that she's a people watcher. And this painting gives us an opportunity to watch her. And it's quite incredible that even though these two paintings are so technically um, ex uh, incredibly competent, the real skill is to be able to capture the emotion of the person and the longing in Catherine's painting and in Sally, um, looking at what she's thinking. She's given us a few visual clues on the table and it's quite incredible how she's been able to do that. And behind me here, this is our winner of the 2020 Kalleen Art Prize. This is a painting by Zoe Young, uh, quite an accomplished um, developing um, beyond emerging arts, very strong practice. And Zoe um, has travelled here to Cowra a lot in her youth when she was young. She had cousins living here, and this is a, a typical kind of feel of a painting when she was here and she was young. And, and it's that kind of open landscape, uh, fun, um, uh, enjoyment, uh, lots of kids compared to today and how we're kind of struggling through um, COVID. And beyond that, we're finding ourselves at home more. And uh, we, uh, when you're bringing up a young family like Zoe is at the moment, you look longingly back at the memory of your time as a young person when there was no digital, there was no phone, there was no iPad, there was no laptop, there was no star stable, there was none of those kind of things. Um, and, and yet we were still able to enjoy those kind of great outdoors. And so how do you bring that forward to today? How do you, how do you, how do you enable this for your, your new family when you had it, when we've got all these digital um, devices around? And digital is great, we're doing digital now, um, but it has its challenges um, uh, for um, young families. But what's interesting about this show is it's about memory, but it's also looking back longingly at you, at you and your time when you were young, and how can you translate that as a parent? How can you translate that forward for your young family when it's a totally different environment? But I see in this painting great optimism, and I see in this show so much optimism, that as much as there's a pandemic, we've had bushfires, we've had floods, this is a great example of how artists can translate the future, uh, how we can talk about optimism for the future and, and bring that forward, bring great ideas. We can examine the landscape, we can enjoy the landscape, we can look back on memory and narratives and time gone past. So I do hope you'll be able to come in to Cowra Regional Gallery and see the show in the flesh. Uh, I can only commend it to you greatly. Thank you.